Good morning, Donald. Welcome back to Bizarre Beasts Season Zero. Hank and I are trading off hosting duties on our year-long journey to remaster the original Bizarre Beast episodes from Vlogbrothers with corrections, updates, and new facts. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for the pin set announcement and some bonus facts. We're on time for another Bizarre Beast, and this time I get to talk about a weird animal who I know personally. In a way, this is the animal who inspired this idea because back many years ago on SciShow, he came to visit me and I, one, I looked very, I looked younger. That SciShow talk show is from 2013 and the Vlogbrothers video is from 2019 and now somehow it's 2024. Time is weird. And two, I freaked out because like if a spaceship landed in my backyard and this thing came out, that would seem perfectly normal, aside from there being a spaceship in my backyard. He is a prehensile tailed porcupine, of which there are many species. This is a Brazilian porcupine in particular. I have not ever seen anything like that. And even more specifically, this individual is Kimosabe, who lives with my friends Jesse and Augusto here in Montana at Animal Wonders, which is a permanent home and safe haven for exotic animals and native animals that can't return to the wild. Unfortunately, Kimo is no longer with us, but he does get to live on through this channel and through all the videos he was in on the Animal Wonders YouTube channel. Now, Kimo is a bit of an internet celebrity, partially because of how he looks. There's just that giant tail and there's all the spines and that very good weird marshmallow nose, but also because of how he sounds. Now, there are cuter animals in the world, but I don't know if there are cuter sounding animals. Let's take a minute, just give it a listen. <gasps> <laughs> it's a little bit reminiscent of like a baby cooing, but they also just like sound kind of human. Like this is a noise that it would be easy for me to make. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And hearing like this human sound come out of this very not human looking organism is, you know, a little bit exhilarating. It's very cute. It's also a little unsettling. And those emotions don't often come together in the same time. Now for a weird thing about porcupines. Um, that word includes a number of different species. They include the ones that we have here in the US uh, and also down in Central and South America, like prehensile tail porcupines. And then there are the European and African and Asian porcupines, the old world porcupines, and they are totally not related. I mean, they are, they're both rodents, but their quills evolved separately. They evolved from a common ancestor that didn't have quills. I wanted to pause and clarify this a little bit because I can see how it could be confusing. To say that porcupines from Europe, Africa, and Asia evolved their quills separately from the porcupines of the Americas, we have to talk about a thing called parsimony. When evolutionary biologists build family trees, they're basically trying to come up with the tree that requires the fewest steps to explain the traits we observe. So in this case, we can build a family tree of rodents that includes both groups of porcupines and look at who they're most closely related to and whether they have quills or not. It turns out that the porcupines of the Americas are more closely related to a bunch of other South American rodents that don't have spines than they are to the porcupines in Europe, Asia, and Africa. And that means it's more parsimonious to assume that each of the two groups of porcupines evolved their quills independently from ancestors that didn't have quills, versus more than two groups of other South American rodents losing their quills. They're only both called porcupines because they're both spine pigs, like pig pork, spine, pine, pork pine. That's really where their name comes from. They're thorn pigs. But because their quills evolved separately, they actually function completely differently. Okay, this is only kind of true. Both groups of porcupines have quills to defend against predators, but the anatomy of their quills is a little different. The porcupines of the Americas have single quills mixed in with other kinds of hair and fur, and those quills have microscopic barbs on them. The porcupines of Europe, Africa, and Asia, on the other hand, have clusters of smooth quills with no barbs. And it isn't the only time this has happened. Hedgehogs and echidna also have spines that evolved completely separately, because like, it's just not a terrible idea to be really unpleasant to bite. And here's a bonus fact about how being unpleasant to bite might evolve. 
One study from 2016 looked at a bunch of different mammal defense mechanisms, including spines, quills, bony plates, and stinky sprays to try to figure out what ecological traits might drive their evolution. And they found that insect-eating mammals between about 800 grams and 9 kilograms that lived in open habitats like grasslands or deserts were more likely to have one of these defenses. But the Brazilian porcupine lives in a closed habitat, tropical forests. So the researchers think that they kept their quills because of the threat of harpy eagles, who hunt in forests, which would be a strong selective pressure on the porcupines. Prehensile-tailed porcupines live in trees. That's why they have their prehensile tails, and they are very good climbers. Indeed, when a porcupet is born, and yes, that is the proper word for a baby porcupine, they're soft and fuzzy and can't very well be carried around by their big thorny mamas. So they have the same muscular tails and functioning claws as their mamas, and they can climb from day one. If you missed this critter the first time around, our Season Zero pin set is now available. This set includes all 12 of the animals we began this Bizarre Beast journey with on Vlogbrothers, including the prehensile-tailed porcupine. To get the Season Zero pin set, visit BizarreBeastShow.com. Okay, final bonus fact time. Earlier, I explained how we know that porcupines from Africa and Asia aren't that closely related to the porcupines of the Americas. But why there are rodents, including porcupines, in South America is also a wild story. Now, you might know that the team that works on this show also works on another channel, PBS Eons, all about the history of life on Earth. And that means we love cramming a little paleontology into this show when we can. And in this case, that means I get to tell you that the ancestors of the group of rodents known as caviomorphs probably got to South America by floating over from Africa on masses of plant debris that acted like rafts sometime between about 45 and 30 million years ago. If you want to know more, you can check out the Eons episode, When Rodents Rafted Across the Ocean.